Richard Perry Loving being a white person and the Mildred Jeter being a colored person did unlawfully cohabitate as man and wife. Richard? That ain't right! Joel, we have you playing uh, Richard Loving in Loving. Mm -hmm. How was it um, first hearing about that? Did you hear about it from the documentary or from when they presented the opportunity of playing the role? Well, Jeff told me about it. Okay. And I was like, oh, I've never heard about them, but I'm you know, Australian, so that made sense. But then I realized not very many Americans, you know, who either weren't young African-American kids who learn about in school or weren't the children of, you know, an interracial marriage. Because a lot of people who say, oh, this is my mom and dad's story. This is, you know, uh, my grandparents' story. They knew about it. It's such a significant story. And yet it, it had flown so under the radar. So that the first point was was Jeff telling me. And then I watched the documentary and I was like, this is going to be great. Like, I got to be in this movie. I got to be in it. <laughs> I know that the Lovings, they're very reserved and quiet people. And mm. in the film, it shows as well, which I think is great that Jeff incorporated that. But for you and Ruth, how was that having to act with very minimal dialogue? I thought it was going to be easy, you know. I mean, on, on a kind of jokey level, I always said, like, you know, I didn't have to do any homework the night before. But, you know... The, the, the pressure to actually be specific about why they were silent was, was something very significant because, you know, when you look at, uh, I think when you look at injustice, you realise, sadly, people learn to shut their mouth because the system or the government or whatever those forces are that are kind of limiting your freedom, you realise, like, to fight against it is quite dangerous and to fight against it may may create a cost that you don't want to cough up right. and I think it's sad that injustice breeds silence so I love that the film is the way it is because you go you want people to scream sometimes you want them to fight but when you're taught for too long not to what do you do you just kind of surrender and exactly. you shut up and that's very telling if the Lovings were to see this film, in like one word, if you could sum up how you would hope that they would react to it, what would that be? I, I would hope that they were happy. I know Richard would be mortified. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mildred be would mortified. be Mildred. I want to put the kitchen back, right back here. Richard, stop this. I don't know what you're saying. I bought it. This whole acre. I'm gonna build you a house. Right here. Our house. Would you marry me? Mildred would love it though. She would love it. I think Mildred would just be holding Ruth's hand. <laughs> Richard would be looking at me going, oh, <laughs> like, because he wouldn't want to be the center of attention yet again. And a hundred years from now, I know in the film you hear the word, you hear the sentence a lot, you should have known better. You should have known better than to have done what you've done. A yeah. hundred years from now, what is it that you think collectively as humanity we should have known better? You know what's really sad? I think it's gonna be the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Because we say, oh, this is relevant now. You go, this was relevant in the early 90s in the LA riots. This was relevant in other times, you know, in recent history. Um, it's relevant all the time. It just depends how hot the topic is and how newsworthy it is in comparison to other things. Um, we should always know better about uh, placing value judgment on otherness. And I think that the, the real pure source, you know, uh, uh, are children who haven't had the education in the negative direction to place the judgment value. So I don't think it's true that kids don't see colour. I think they see it, but they don't make a judgment on it. 
And that's the neighbourhood that Richard and Mildred grew up in as well. There were people who, they, they were grown adults who didn't place value judgment on colour. They, their commonality was just putting food on the table. And mm -hmm. as Richard said, like, we all looked out for each other. We helped each other. And I hope that 100 years from now, we will be looking out for each other. Yeah, and I hope so. And it, but one by one, the more and more people who learn that and learn to have empathy and, and learn to then pass that on to their children, and then we can slowly, as we do, evolve as human beings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.